Hi folks, it's Steve Grizzetti again, co-founder of MoviePicks.com and author of the MoviePicks.com Guide to Adobe Premiere Rush. And here we are in part two of our five-part basic training series. Now in part one, we created a new project, but let's open an old project. We'll go back out to the home by clicking on this little house in the upper left-hand corner. These are all of the projects that are in the works right now. You may notice in the lower left-hand corner, some of them show a little computer screen. Some of them show a little uh, computer screen with a cloud on it. Well, the ones with a cloud on it are being stored in the Creative Cloud. So I can go to any computer anywhere, assuming the media is on it, and I can open up this project. Uh, that's also from any device, my phone, from my iPad, whatever, and I can begin editing the project or continue editing the project if it's on the Creative Cloud. If it's here on my home computer, I can only edit it from my home computer. So how do I set it to sync to the cloud? Well, if I go over here to the right hand corner of one of these thumbnails and click on project options, I have the option to turn off sync. If I turn off the sync, this project is going to be stored on my hard drive rather than the cloud. If on the other hand, I go to one of the projects like the water park here that is stored on my computer, I can click on more options and I can turn on sync, in which case it will link back to the cloud. You notice I also have the option here to rename any of my projects from this screen, but let's go ahead and open up one of the projects just by clicking on the thumbnail. Now the timeline in Rush is very simple. There's a single main track that runs through the center of the interface, and if I want to rearrange any of my clips, all I need to do is drag them, as you might expect. Very simple. You notice the timeline ripples, it fills in the gap. If there's a space between the two, they automatically snap together. But we can also add video to the track above this track. In fact, if I just drag a clip up above it and let go, you notice it creates a new track. I can actually do that with up to three extra tracks. Now these three extra tracks include not just the video clip itself, but they include the audio for that clip. And in addition, we can create three audio tracks underneath here the same way, just by dragging them uh, or adding the media to our timeline. And as a matter of fact, let's do that. Here's how you add media to a project in the works. You just go up here to the left, click on the plus button and select media. And from here we can browse to wherever we've got say sound files, music for instance. And when I select and add the audio clip, notice it won't be added to the end of my timeline. It will be added to a brand new track underneath. Now if it were a video clip, of course it's added to the video, the main video timeline. Notice, by the way, when it comes to rippling, rippling does not affect the other tracks or the other tracks aren't affected by rippling, only the main track, but any action you do to the main track, adding or deleting a, a clip affects all of the other tracks. So it actually just moved my audio, my music clip and deleted it completely. I'm going to control Z to bring that back here. There we go. Let's move that there. And then when I delete this clip, everything just moves back. So you can have three extra tracks of video. One of those is going to, at least one is going to hold your titles, most likely. You can have three tracks of audio. You may have a narration track. You may have a music track. You may have, say, ambient sound or sound effects. So there's plenty of room to work here, and your, your timeline can be as simple or as complicated as you want. By the way, even though I've removed a number of clips from my timeline, I can still access those. If I go up here to the View menu, and open up Project Assets, this little window opens up. These are all of the clips that were at one time or another added to my timeline. They remain in Project Assets for me to use, and I can just add them back into my movie, and I don't have to go digging all through my directories to get them. So we'll close Project Assets here, and with that, we'll close part two of our five-part series. Hope you join me for part three, basic training for Adobe Premiere Rush.